Welcome and thanks for joining us. Montgomery County, Maryland has three incubators, as they're called. The incubator system is part of the county's business center team, which is all part of the Montgomery County Executive's Office with resources, people, and programs to support growth in the county and help businesses launch, grow, and expand. The Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation is the economic development partner with the county. Our guests today include three people who know all about the incubator system and what it can do to help businesses thrive. Dr. John Mum is president and CEO of DECA Biosciences. Tracy Rausch is the founder and chief innovation officer of DocBox. And Dr. Maria Ordineta is founder and CEO of Micro Recycling Systems. So let's start with you, John. Tell me about your business and what the incubators have done for you. So first, I want to thank everybody, especially Ruth and team there at the Germantown Innovation Center has really been profoundly instrumental for us in order to start our company. What we do is we design uh, and develop new um, immune oncology, so molecules that stimulate the immune system to destroy tumors. And in conjunction with that, we've also figured out how to select patients to figure out who best can respond to each molecule we make. And we call those molecules diakines. Wow. So how has the incubator helped your business? Uh, to be honest, we wouldn't be where we are without them. Why is um, that? They have completely enabled us to grow uh, faster than I've ever grown a company before. Uh, it's been incredibly useful in terms of all of the different um, types of labs that we've had to set up. Uh, again, Ruth and team have just been more than accommodating. We call her on a Friday and on Monday we've moved into, if we haven't done it already on Friday, <laughs> but uh, by Monday we've officially moved into to the, the different lab or the different offices and it's, it's truly been phenomenal. They help you w with the space and everything? Well, the space is, space is there. Uh, it's really more of a question of us, me kind of walking around the incubator and then saying, Ruth, you know, I really need this, this lab or this office and, and usually it's, it's not an issue whatsoever. Tracy, what about DocBox? How have things worked out for you? And what, and what does DocBox do? So DocBox is a, a company that's in the digital health space where we're looking at the integration of data right next to the patient in order to make better decisions for the doctors and nurses, um, including everything from patient safety to new visualizations of data, um, mostly in critical care right now um, as we move forward. But really, you know, our, our goal is to be able to impact about a billion lives um, through basically better, higher quality healthcare at a lower cost. And how do they use that technology, the way, the way, way you just described? Um, so right now, um, the platform, you know, sits next to the patient's bedside. It allows that doctor to have a single entry point at the bedside to be able to, to actually look at information, look at data, have a single source of information and truth um, right where they're taking care of the patient. That's amazing. So what is your experience with the incubators and how it's helped? Uh, the incubator has been great. Um, we um, historically have spent a lot of time in, in the DC metro area. Um, you know, we have great partnerships with um, several government agencies and you know, the research and development of this. And this has given us a home um, in Montgomery County to be able to have better and closer interactions with um, you know, the various government agencies and our sponsors and, and having that relationship. Mario, so. tell us about micro recycling systems. Micro recycling systems is developing re recycling machinery that is a hundred times smaller in size and price as the current options. Uh, and our goal is to enable the capture of vast amounts of plastic that is currently without a path to recycling. And how is your experience with the incubator? Well, the incubator has been very helpful to me um, for one, accessing uh, new forms of capital that I hadn't considered. For example, a, a, a micro grant that uh, I recently was awarded for purchasing scientific equipment, so it's very helpful. But also, um, when you are um, developing enabling technologies, you are asking your stakeholders, your future customers, your financiers to, to think of, dream of a future that currently doesn't exist by definition. And that can be very hard to people. I honestly didn't realize how hard it is to do that when it's coming from an underrepresented minority CEO. I have found a stark difference in the reaction from people when I tell them that I'm part of the Montgomery County Incubator. It's as if suddenly they, they are open to what I have to say and, and my company then can then be valued on, on its terms. That's all I need. So what is the experience like, and any, anybody can pick this up, when you first start in your association with the incubator, describe the process and how it works. 
So I can go that process. So we, okay. you know, applied and went through, you know, an interview process. And once we were accepted, they were like, do you want to move in tomorrow? So <laughs> it's a pretty simple process. Um, uh, Docbox actually moved in during the pandemic. Um, and so we, uh, it was a a little quiet to start with, but it actually turned out to be a really good place to actually have interactions and communications with other companies and other startups going through this. this and is this, going through. is it ongoing support? It's ongoing support. Whenever we've needed something or have had to reach out with something, they've been been great for us. We're um, you know in a pretty substantial growth phase right now, so it's been um, it's been good to just be able to say, okay, I need you know. I, we're potentially looking at extra space. What's the timing of this? You know, like we're, you know, things change in any type of phase we're at, but it changes, you know, in a 24 hours notice. And anytime right. I've asked, they've been able to support that. John, what was your experience walking in? So um, I've spent about uh, 30 years originally in the Bay Area in San Francisco. And one of the biggest barriers to entry for any small startup is space. Uh, and with, uh, with the incubator, it was shocking to me how simple it was, even in terms of list of chemicals and understanding, you know, we need to get certain cabinets to store it. They already had fume hoods. So in terms of all of those pieces that you need for doing kind of hardcore research, everything was already mapped out. It was already there. It was already simple. Wow. Um, it was really, I mean, to be honest, as I've said before, it was incredible the enablement that the incubator system provides small companies because one of the hardest things to do is find someone who speaks your language who understand what you, what you need, who is there instantaneously to help you. I mean, literally, email at, you know, even one o'clock in the morning sometimes, and by nine o'clock, I have an answer. So it's, it's really, uh, it's been really remarkable to that part of the startup phase here. And Mario, what was your experience dealing with the incubator? Uh, there's not much that I can add. It truly, one word, easy. You can tell yeah. that there's effort by the staff in facilitating things ahead of you. And you can also tell that without them, it wouldn't be that easy. So what's next now for all of your companies? Tracy, let's go back to you. So um, with our company, we're, we're in a growth phase. Um, you know, we're just entering into the marketplace um, in the United States and elsewhere. So we're going to be growing out our data science team, our data informatics, uh, you know, our software development team, as well as our whole commercial sales side of the, the process. So, um, you know, we're going to be looking at leaning on, you know, this for the next couple of years to, to be able to basically get to that phase where we can launch out on our own. So, John? Well, we are sadly in the next four months, I'm sorry, Ruth, about to leave the incubator. We've grown to the extent that um, we just started dosing patients with our first molecule. And our next phase is really to start interfacing with pharma for acquisition. And in order to kind of make us look more than just a, a, a company that's in an incubator, we're actually building out space just, just across the street uh, in order to really have those interactions with pharma to show that you know, we have a 40-person team, we're doing, you know, whatever early stage manufacturing. We have all our research set up, et cetera. So unfortunately, I'm, and to, to be honest, I'm very sad to be leaving the incubator. I can't wait to start my next company there. So you'll be hearing from me about a year. Later. <laughs> <laughs> Mario, describe what the experience was like and what's, and what's next for you going forward. Well, um, the incubator has been, as I said before, uh, very, very helpful in many ways. Um, but, uh, starting with uh, uh, giving a sense of community. This process can be very, very lonely. Uh, again, you're dreaming up things that most people will just nod their heads at, almost by definition. And so just having came folk around Not or you, shake. It's very <laughs> helpful, right? Um, mm. And well, uh, next uh, for my company, we are in the midst of closing in a seed round uh, from a foreign strategic investor. And we are fairly early on in the innovation cycle, so we're just getting started. So now you're ready to move away from the incubator. Are you, do you both stay with the incubator now for a while? So we'll be staying with the incubator for a while. Um, you know, what our focus in D.C. is going to be, it's going to be important that, you know, we have a presence here. And so it's just that timing of keeping it, keeping that moving and that growth. So. And you too? For us, well, uh, as I've grown to get to know the, the, the incubator, I'm seeing that I'm going to be longer than I thought I would be initially. Is that a good thing? Yes, very good thing. Oh, good. And does the incubator help you with the next phase as you're getting ready to move into? Uh, for us, less so, only really, to be honest, because we're right across the street. Uh, and so we just have folks that come in and, and move for us. I think the, the, the part that the incubator has really enabled is it, to be honest, as simple as it sounds, it's just a freight elevator that we can put our massive pieces of equipment into, and then a loading dock that goes up and down so that whatever the truck is that we're moving, it's as easy as you can imagine to actually move these 800,000 pound pieces of instrumentation 
into our, our you know, moving van to, to go to the next site. What would you advise potential new businesses who want to come into the incubator? I think it's a great experience and a great opportunity. And, you know, I think that Mario put a good point on it is this is a lonely process. So you mm -hmm. need to be around other people who <laughs> are willing to suffer like you are. Um, so <laughs> I think the steps that you want to go through and being around like minded mm -hmm. people keeps that, in, you know, that excitement and that that motivation to keep moving. So I, I highly recommend it to folks to it's a great way to start because it does take that stress off of, of finding space of, you know, where's these resources? You just have somebody to ask and you don't always have that. So you agree. Absolutely. Um, entrepreneurship um, is all about the ecosystem and building an ecosystem is very, very hard. Once you've done it, okay, fine. Silicon Valley is a good example of it. But building it bit by bit, company by company is very tough. And without this sorts of framework, uh, it's just, you know, one, uh, as an entrepreneur, you just don't stand a chance. Was the process at all difficult getting into the incubator? No, absolutely not. I mean, it was here's your key and move in. It, was, it wasn't that too bad. We didn't have big equipment to move and things like that. But, um, you know, as I said, you have to go through the process. You know, they I know they have the ability to help you with, you know, pitch decks and introductions and, you know, in those steps. And, you know, we've taken that advantage in some cases of being able to just have that network to be able to to because it's very difficult to do a cold call to somebody to say, I need help with this or I need to figure this out. Right. But that's what they're there for. And that's what they're there for. So. I would like to yeah. add that, that perhaps there's a step that we are not seeing uh, to enter the incubator, and, and that is that, well, they check you out. Are you for real? Uh, and uh, to us, because we are for real, it's not really a step, but, but you see it filters out uh, folks, and, and, and it just plays a very important role in creating this ecosystem and an environment that then we can trust each other, trade with each other, collaborate, uh, without this vetting, that just would not right. be feasible. This one thing I'd also like to add, um, having kind of done companies in Boston and the Bay Area, uh, the price point that uh, the incubator provides with regard to space, triple net, these, these things that if you have never started a company before, you really don't understand that, you know, having facilities ready to go, having the lights on, having a backup generator, having a freight elevator, all these things that, that all of the incubators, from my understanding, have in place. If I were to try and build that, say, with ARE, so Alexandria um, Real Estate, mm -hmm. it, it, the price point just to get into a space would be a couple hundred thousand dollars. And that's a couple hundred thousand dollars that I would much rather spend doing research or hiring people or something that's, you know, for lack of a better word, useful. And so one of the, the reasons why I actually moved here is specifically because this county uh, offers a an, an environment that you know inclusive of the incubators is truly second to none in this country to permit entrepreneurs to build companies, and I don't think that gets called out enough. Nice. Anything else to add, anybody? I wanted to to add how uh, great of an area this is for for various reasons, in, including access to, to markets of the East Coast. Um, there are ecosystems that have capital, so you don't have to go very, very far between here in New York, Boston, uh, south of us. Uh, important for me, we have a, a large manufacturing base, mm -hmm. North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida. So it physically is a good location. Uh, freight is relatively inexpensive. Flying is inexpensive. I didn't realize how important ease of business was until I actually got into the driver's seat myself. Something else that I think is commendable uh, is that um, Montgomery County interacts, uh, its, its political leaders interact positively with those at uh, lower levels, the city level, at the state level. And so this effective collaboration, rather than getting bogged down in, in distractions, is very valuable to the state as well, to the entrepreneurship ecosystem. Awesome. Similar experience for you, Tracy? Absolutely. And I think to add to that, I think you also have a, a population base of, of Cuban capital to be able to hire. Um, you've got an amazing university system surrounding this area of universities and experience. And, um, you know, in some, in some areas, that's actually a tough find to be able to find. You know, you've got world class universities here. You've got, you know, world class, you know, researchers. You've got access to, you know, various government agencies, everything's at your fingertips to be able to be part of the process. And that's all part of, at least, you know, in our space of being in this, 
you know, healthcare realm, you know, that right. that's really important to actually be in, be part of it, not just be reacting to it. Wonderful. So, Other areas that uh, we should cover? I can say with regard to the FDA, uh, proximity not so much, um, but I will give a plug for the FDA. Uh, having dealt with them for 30 years, they are a collection of folks that uh, are so dedicated to ensuring, uh, as Mario said, the kind of you guys vetting us. Um, the FDA is remarkable in their dedication to the amount of effort, work, stringency that they put into reviewing IND applications. It's truly remarkable. Um, on the other side, uh, exactly to Tracy's point, with regard to the close proximity to folks, and this is, this is slightly different from what we have or what I've experienced on the East Coast and say on uh, East Coast, farther north and West Coast, kind of all up and down the seaboard, is the dedication of uh, researchers here to developing therapies that truly help people is a little different, well, I, I, I won't sugarcoat it, it's a lot different than what I've experienced uh, in these different places. And, and fundamentally, there's a desire to, to truly build something of value uh, that has the capacity to impact disease. And that's slightly different from a more transactional environment that you find in these more mature ecosystems where people accrue knowledge and they understand the value of their knowledge and they apply that almost in a mercenary fashion in order to enrich themselves as much as possible. And it's very different here where all of the folks that I've hired for the most part have no understanding of what an option is. I literally you know, every fifth Monday of, you know, the, of, of, the, of the year, I'm actually explaining what an option is, how it builds value for them, how as the company grows in value, those options grow in value, and that is money, if you will, that is capital to them. That's not something that factors into their equation when they decide to take a job at a startup, right? And then when you think startup, typically it's all about the value creation for everyone in the company as well as for investors. I always couch it differently and I say, look, if we are dedicated to the development of a therapeutic that truly can positively affect a person with a terrible disease, the rest of it sorts itself. The thing we have to focus on is making a therapy. And people around here understand that far more than, than anyone in my past 30 years of experience. Has it been help, helpful to you being near the FDA and I, also NIH? I think they've both been helpful. We don't have a lot of interaction with NIH at this point, but it is helpful with the fact that we work very closely with the U.S. Army and with, um, you know, there's been a lot of work in the space that we're in. It's actually a new realm in digital health and moving forward. So, um, you know, having, you know, we've had a lot of inter interactions with the FDA, um, not just from a, we're making a filing level, but a, a sharing of, of information, a sharing of, of, of data. Um, you know, the same with, um, you know, government policymakers, other right. things of how do you actually do this? How do you go forward? How do you be, you know, how do you, how do you push the envelope a little bit? And it's been actually extremely helpful. Um, you know, I, I've always said that um, technology may be built in other places in the country, but policy is made in this area. <laughs> and policy is actually is more, more powerful than the technology in a lot of ways. Wow. Mario, so. anything to add? Well, even though I'm in recycling, I, I have benefited from being close to the NIH. Uh, I used to invent uh, radiological devices and other types, and so I uh, part of my development was funded through the, that agency. And now I also know uh, friends in the entrepreneurship ecosystem that are that are part of that. And well, I I, I draw technology from that side to cross pollinate into the other place. Uh, Yes, NIH, but, but also there's also um, DOD, Department of Defense facilities nearby. Uh, White Oaks is uh, FDA White Oaks facilities. It's also nearby, so there's much to like near here. So Tracy, which incuba incubator are you with and what's it like there? So um, we're located in the Silver Spring incubator. It's downtown Silver Spring, so it's great access, metro and other accesses to get to it. Is there so, a specialty with that incubator? That special incubator is um, cybersecurity and digital health. Mm -hmm. so. John? I'm at the Germantown incubator. Uh, so far as I know, our, our uh, specialty is uh, developing new molecules. <laughs> <laughs> Mario? I am based out of the Rockville Innovation Center, next door to the Rockville Library. Uh, and. I used to go there for my first start about the library meetings and, and, and have them there. 
I also enjoy the bubble tea shops around the Rockville <laughs> Innovation Center. <laughs> what is the specialty of that particular incubator? Uh, our incubator covers uh, physical sciences and other types of sciences not covered in the other two. Excellent. In general. Well, I'd like to thank today's guest, Dr. John Mum, President and CEO of DECA Biosciences. Tracy Rausch is founder and chief innovation officer of DocBox, and Dr. Mario Urdaneta is founder and CEO of Micro Recycling Systems. I'm your moderator, Bruce Allen. For more on this discussion, visit WTOP.com and search Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation.